Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press. And as always, we have Ezekiel Nyai took on beautiful Thursday uh, joining us this morning. He's a public affairs analyst. Ezekiel Nyai took is a delight to have you this morning. Well, um, I'm hoping that we're able to ratify and sort out the audio and connection. Oh, uh, okay. I say it's a pleasure to be with you and thanks for having me. Miss Senyai, you're back at our favorite spot. I always love to see you uh, with a beautiful picture behind you. <laughs> only 33 years married. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, that's not only you. <laughs> we, have to, we have to get some tips from you off uh, Messi and myself. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so let's head straight to it. We'll be looking at the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. And usually our focus would be on the top stories. I start off with the banner caption, boldly written on the Daily Trust, Buhari endorses Abdullahi Abdamu as APC chairman. Convention to ratify nomination. You also have another writer saying aspirin kicks. Aisha Buhari at National Assembly, six special seats for women. Interesting. And you also have the agri intervention. Federal government to buy 2 billion naira cattle for Taba. And that's also another you know, issue that was uh, making the rounds yesterday on different uh, spaces. You also have, I was led by spirit pastor held for rape, says. Okay. And uh, just before we move away, court orders for feature of 10 property and funds linked to Yari. We lost 54 billion naira to flight cancellation and bed strikes, according to airlines. And 80% of military personnel performing police duties in 36 states. This is according to the CDS. These are some of the headlines. But just before we move away, Gisau impeached senator uh, sworn in as Zamfara deputy governor. Uh, you know the story of the impeachment of uh, the deputy governor and swearing in the senator as a deputy governor. That also is another conversation that's making the rounds in uh, different parts of our spaces in Nigeria. But that's it this morning on the Daily Trust. Let's go over to the leadership with these headlines. The lead one there, a kicker as APC PDP consider southern ticket. The headline says hope of Igbo presidency dims over killings in Southeast. Following writers, regional leaders blame for worsening situation. It's not enough to deny us presidency or Hanese protests. Attacks unacceptable, Northern groups or group fumes, the tasks ahead of 2023 elections challenging INEC. Other headlines on the front page of the leadership this morning. Senator Gosal replaces Gosal as Zamfar deputy governor. Quite interesting. APC chairmanship, PMB, governors, zero in on Abdullahi Adamu. Adulterated fuel, our product conforms with Nigeria's specification, Duke Oil, Oando. Fanny Kaide's medical report is fake, hospital tells court. Aisha Buhari makes case for women at NAS. She was there uh, on the day when the constitution review process was set in motion, uh, particularly with interest on a particular amendment for gender uh, advancement and equality. These are headlines on the front page of uh, leadership. Let's move away from the leadership newspaper and uh, take a look at the punch on the front page of the punch newspaper. Outrage as National Assembly considers live pension for presiding officers. Now, it sounds or feels like a deja vu uh, to me, but it feels like we have been here before uh, with this particular issue and it got a lot of uh, Nigerians talking, talking about the constitution amendment. Underneath you have several writers. It's wasteful, self-centered, rejected. Civil society organization tells lawmakers it's financial burden. Uh, and you also have committee recommends pension for Senate president, speaker and deputies. That's uh, the board uh, header for the Punch newspaper this morning. You also have current system suffocating Nigerians. Bishop Cooker is quoted on that. One, another header this morning on the Punch says $1.04 billion spent on fuel import in 2021, says 
the Central Bank of Nigeria. That's the CBN. And just before we move away, strike continues. As we insist, Ngige pleads with union. I wonder what will happen, you know, with the back and forth, uh, as and the federal government. Fuel scarcity persists as NMPC releases 387.6 million liters of petrol. Reps deep in probe. Wando Duke Oil insists government approved dirty fuel. Uh, that's a lot. And fire destroy finance ministry in Veta room. Uh, there's a picture to that effect uh, yesterday that unfortunate and sad incident actually happened. Buhari signs electoral bill Friday and CSO suspend protests. Federal government's school feeding costs 100 naira per child. Uh, the scheme to go up 1 billion naira daily. Uh, I could see the, the smile beaming on Kofi's face, you know, very partially, not entirely. And just before we move away, you have this one saying, court orders interim for feature of Yari's United States properties and orders. And that's it on the nation, I beg your pardon, the Punch newspaper uh, this morning. Let's quickly uh, switch to the nation uh, this morning with the um, big headline there. Lawmakers to vote on VAT, power devolution, others. Constitution review enters crucial stage. Speaker to reps, you must participate. Court orders for feature of 10 properties linked to Yari. IMF calls for banks recapitalization. Battle for APC, top posts, shifts to zones. Zamfara get new, gets new deputy governor after Gusau's sack. More on the front page of the nation. Airlines lost $60 million to bird strikes in one year. Regbe Shola's man asks court to void Oyetola's victory. And finally, a violence mars Oshun PDP ward delegates poll. And NDLEA destroys 255 hectares of hemp farms in Ondo. Those are the headlines on the front page of the nation. All right, uh, let's have Ezekiel Yaitouk join the conversation. Uh, good morning once again, Ezekiel Yaitouk. It's good to have you join us uh, this beautiful morning. Good morning and thanks again for having me. Very good morning to you all. Okay, so we set off the conversation with the Punch newspaper this morning, uh, talking about the Constitution Amendment, the outrageous National Assembly considers life pension for presiding officers. And to me, it feels like, you know, we've been here before. I have seen this before. Maybe it has actually happened as a conversation, but probably sounds like a deja vu. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I, I think that there's a disconnect between Nigerians in more ways than one. I wanted to say Nigerians and the National Assembly or politicians, but they are also Nigerians. So different uh, divides of Nigeria. Now, during election time, when is when you should vote in people that will take these decisions, you jettison the fundamentals, which has to do with the recruitment criteria, you go for money. These people mortgage their souls, their conscience, their properties to meet your greed as Nigerians, because you insist they must pay you, you want to sell your vote. Then when this will get into office, you suddenly forget that you had sucked them dry you want them to start to serve you, you forget the very ignoble role that you played, and then you put this pressure on the people in the National Assembly to do the right thing. The right thing is for them to recoup their investments. This might sound very, very uncharitable, but I want you to really sit down and think. If you want people to serve you, it is just commonsensical that you should look for the people that will serve you. Why should a man pay you to serve you? It doesn't make sense. If the man pays you, it becomes a transaction. It's just like a, a tenant comes to your house. If you want to keep your house, keep it. But the moment you want to let out your house, you are going to let out your right to use that house for the period you have let your house to that person. It's just as simple as that. And it is instructive for me to say that now because we are about to start a new cycle. 
Now, these people are about to leave and they're not thinking about you because they never thought about you from the beginning. They were thinking about themselves just like you were thinking of yourself from the beginning. But this is a time for us to say, National Assembly, whatever you do, we are going to undo. No, because Ezekiel uh, yeah. Section 84, subsection 5 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic is amended, uh, guarantees life pension for former president and vice president, and the cost gulps about 8.8 .8 billion annually. So I'll tell you. So it, tell it, you it just gives room for, I mean, this kind of conversation to go. If this is going to happen for the president and the vice president, why can we have, you know, the speakers and the lawmakers? I mean, I'll, these I'll are the persons uh, follow suit. Look. Let's, let's not follow those conversations that they want us to go. Section chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2B of the Constitution of the Federal Republic says that the security and welfare of, let me use my word, the most vulnerable, because it says the people. But when you say the people, it does not give you the spirit, because the people, the generality of the people are the poor people. They are the most vulnerable. So if I rephrase it, I'll say the security and welfare of the most vulnerable is the primary um, uh, duty or essence of government. Shall be, in fact, they use the word shall be the primary purpose of government. That is the most important statement on the essence of government, what you go in there to do. Now, I believe that any Nigerian past head of state should not live in penury. I believe that. I also believe that their welfare is not a primary responsibility. But to be fair to them, any head of state that is seen to be living below par, the National Assembly in that of the nation or the State House of Assembly can intervene based on need. For you to tell me that in Lagos State, that a man like Mr. Tinubu, because he was a former governor, should be given four cars every year, given or every cycle as a condemn fit, given a house in, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Or you come to a, a quiet boom, you say a man like my brother Akpabio should be given a, a house when there is no water in Isnobolo in the villages for the people to drink. It, you see, we are going to have somewhere along the line a set of people who understand what government is all about and they are going to repeal all these laws and rather institute welfare laws that will ensure that the people of Nigeria, the most vulnerable, the physically challenged, the women, the children, the workers, the elderly, the youths, the students, that these people become the primary purpose of government. So whatever they are doing now is self-serving. And I want to tell you, I want to put it on record that those things will be reversed, whatever they do. We are starting to tell Nigerians, their eyes are starting to open as to what government is and what governance is all about, and that they've been taking for a ride for too long. And I want to tell you that these people are starting to see reason for them to consider 2023 from completely different perspectives and paradigms. All right, let, let, let's move on to um, the, the, uh, the clamor for a president from the southeast you know, part of Nigeria. Um, the leadership has a headline, as APC PDP consider southern ticket hope of Igbo presidency dims over killings in the southeast. Um, uh, do, do you foresee a situation where the entire situation from the IPOB agitations to, you know, secessionist calls and the violence in, in the southeast um, will make it difficult uh, for the rest of Nigeria to be confident that um, they can hand Nigeria into the hands of an Igbo man or woman? Let me, let me say two things. The very first is that I am not one of the fans of zoning. I'm not. We are in a period of national emergency. And what we need as at today is to suspend the protocols and attack 
through a national emergency rescue team where excellence comes before any other consideration. That is my first take on that. The second take is that we need to understand how narratives are driven. I've said this before and I say it again. The presidency generally is being considered as what should come to the South. And the Southwest is just amazing in driving narratives. The Igbos, my in-laws are good at trading, but they need to also put on an A game in politics. All these things are narratives that they want to like, you know, exclude and zone. Please, when we elected President Buhari, what was the situation in the Northeast? What was the situation? And number two, who can tell me that, can show me one Igbo elder that has endorsed the activities of IPOP? Number three, who does not understand the wind in the sail of IPOP? As much as I don't subscribe to the activities, but they will tell you that we are being excluded, we are being marginalized, we want our country. That narrative could not have been given in the Northeast or Northwest, Northwest in particular, Northeast and Northwest. It couldn't have been given. You can tell me why, what the bandits are doing and what, what the terrorists are doing and, and why they are doing it. But I can tell you what IPOP is doing. I may not agree with the methodology, but I agree that it is insensitive, inhuman, for people to feel excluded from the system. And but, it is uh, on the basis... Yeah, yes. Ms. Pesetto, sorry to, to interrupt you there, but, but some um, are also pushing the narrative uh, or the, the, the uh, presumption that um, if, if uh, an, a Southeastern, let me use that, that, that term, uh, assumes the mantle of presidency, that he will divide Nigeria. You just carve out, carve out this plan and say we're is, going. <laughs> please, that is absolute disingenuous and balderdash at the highest possible level. It doesn't make sense. It, 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 um, I don't want to use the word weak. It, 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 um, it's a thinking that's infantile. You are telling me that Mr. Kingsley Mohalu, that we've known over the years, becomes president, then he divides the country. How do presidents take decision? Are you aware that when President Jonathan was the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, there were so many decisions concerning the South South that he could not take? Look, let me even tell you this, which is sad enough. The Southerners are not as brazen. You see what President Buhari is doing now? Hardly can any Southerner do those things. Hardly can any Southerner do those things. Why, why? Each time he leaves the country and leaves, you know, in the hands of Professor Oshibanjo, you see him, like, wanting to impress, wanting to impress. Mr. President, don't get your time, bro. He's never wanted to impress you once. And anybody who comes in as, as the president must feel this sense of debt to the nation to work to impress. But our brother, our guy, Obong Bwari, guy no send though. Whether this is happening, that is not happening, the guy. And you need somebody that is afraid. My mother used to say that the child that has nothing to fear never amounts to anything. The National Assembly is not putting pressure on him. The people, when we talk, we don't even know whether he even sees it because where he is, he's so secluded that he can... Things can actually happen, and they give him a different spin or narrative. Oh, it's no mind, all these people, the other people. And then it is when he leaves office that if he was actually a man of conscience, because I really don't know where to place him, if he's actually a man of conscience, it is when he leaves office that he will start to see the realities. Let me end on this note. There was the man, um, uh, Dr. Joseph Wyers. Now, while he was in New York, there was a, a, a coup, and he says that what hurt him the most was not that there was a coup, but that Nigerians jumped on the street to rejoice. 
He couldn't reconcile that with the impression they had in the office that Nigerians were so much behind them. He said, you mean we were this unpopular and I didn't know? He said it. And that is what every leader has to be careful to be able to find a way of, you know, sidetracking his system to find out what is going in Nigeria. Okay, that's uh, Joseph Wise, former Senate president, I believe. Yes, sir. All right, uh, let's take a look at the, the Daily Trust newspaper. And this one has been generating uh, serious issues. Some persons have described this act as nepotistic. And uh, it, it talks about uh, the agric intervention where the federal government uh, buys two billion naira cattle for Taraba. <laughs> Can we pass? No, no, we can't pass. I mean, this is a, this, this is a serious issue of national unity. L let me just bring you up to speed with some of the conversation that's going on. And some people say you have some persons in our bar, the spare part business, and different uh, you know, parts of the market, the Alaba International Market, the Ariaria Market, and, and persons who are into different kinds of businesses. Uh, why is it that it feels like you know, this particular gesture or this particular intervention is geared towards a select set of persons? And let's not also forget that, you know, with uh, the president, when the president came through, there's a speech that the president is popularly associated with. I belong to nobody and I belong to everybody. And now, you know, you know the president has constantly been accused of being very nepotistic. He's been very um, tribalistic, if that's the word, or very ethnic. And this particular one also Spanish. has generated that conversation. So we'd like to share your thoughts on this and not let you, you see, pass. You see, I, I always wonder why um, uh, 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 my Oga Femi Falana is always laughing, even on very serious matters. And I just caught myself that you were saying that, and I was laughing. And an average Nigerian would just wonder, does this man understand what is going on? You see, I, 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 maybe I should start by apologizing for laughing. But you see, when you expect a dog to meow, or a cat to bark. The problem is not with the cat or with the dog. The problem is with you. I think as of today, it has been established beyond all reasonable doubt who Mr. President is, what his priorities are. So our prayer is that he will not take more serious action before he leaves office and that God will give him the strength, the energy to just, like, just finish this 2022 so that at 2023, because, you see, you need to understand how government works and the essence of government and governance. I believe that he had very good advisors where in that speech, they made that famous line, I belong to all and I belong to none is the most patriotic statement a leader could make. And if that speech came from him, then he would be able to be guided. I don't believe in 100%. No. I believe that politics is a game of interest and the players have to give the latitude to enjoy their game. But if you give them 10% latitude, 15% latitude, that is enough. At least let 80 to 85% be best on national um, and uh, proper considerations. But Mr. President is turning everything on its head. And it's like giving 80% to his clan and then the other 20%, he wants to even share with it. You understand me? That's my personal opinion. It's not the opinion of uh, Plus TV. It's strictly my personal opinion. So please, don't need to put in a disclaimer after now. I've taken responsibility. <laughs> And like I call it, is my opinion. It's not a fact or anything, my opinion. So to that extent, that decision really does not even surprise me. Okay? But a leader will come that will know that there was a time that there were two countries that we loathed. We call them Abame. We call them Taiwan. People may be too young to remember. Those things, anything that was not original is either Abame or Taiwan. Now, fast forward to 2023. Where is ABBA? That were the technology hub of the West African region that had the ingenuity to bring out things that you could compare with foreign products 
only that the finesse was not there. Now, the people of Taiwan saw the skill, they saw the ingenuity, they bumped in and then excavated it or harvested it, and it became a national treasure and, you know, what brought the nation so much wealth and everything. But the people of Nigeria lacked the leadership of foresight or the leader with foresight to look at this and say, this thing that is happening in Abba is something that we can use to rule the West African sub-region, if not Africa generally, and then intervene in it, and then go to some product in the north that you can use as a global product and invest in it. Instead, what we do is a cheap black, um, corruption of fuel subsidy, fuel subsidy. The, and we have not sat down to interrogate this, but a day will come, and I pray that day comes in 2023, when we elect leadership that is responsible, that is responsive, that is focused, that understands what fit for purpose is, that understands the essence of this office, and goes there to discharge the responsibility. And overnight, Nigeria will become a preferred destination. I believe Nigerians will wake up to this reality. All right, let's quickly take one from the front page of the, na uh, the Punch newspaper. The fuel scarcity is still uh, persisting in parts of the country, and fuel gate is still on the National Assembly, in particular the House of Reps has uh, waded into it. And the, the, the Punch newspaper has this headline, Fuel scarcity persists as NNPC releases 387.6 million liters. Last time I heard they were releasing 1 billion liters. I don't know what happened to that. But it says with the writer there, reps deepen probe. Oando Duke Oil insists government approved dirty fuel. Um, so it's been a back and forth, back and forth rather, between uh, these um, uh, oil traders or, or marketers, as they may be called, and uh, the NNPC. And in a time when we were told that the NNPC was a sole importer of the, um, the commodity, it seems to be more confusing. Mr. Yaito, your quick take on this. It comes back to the fundamentals. Maybe because I'm an architect, I, I am I'm so much on foundations. You can have your cake and eat it. These guys are all in on this game. They are gaming us. They know their hands are not clean. You want to go to probe, probe what? If they start the real probe, we, you go off mic. Make them start the real probe, you go off mic. They know what is going on. You see, the biggest problem that we have is that legitimacy is the best, the most valued treasured currency of any government. You know, there's what a young a man told me, he said his father told him, May the man who is always trusted never lie against you. And that statement is so deep. We have a government that we never trust. We never trust. And every day they give us reason why we should never trust them. Because if the government said there'll be fuel this amount at this time, the first thing I'll do is, okay, in that case, let me postpone my journey to acquire boom and stay back. I can go next week, maybe tell them to shift this and that. There's no need to rush to buy fuel. There will be no panic buying. There will be no pressure on the product. Everything will sell smoothly. But when government says we will bring this amount of fuel next week, so the queues will be, the first thing is like, ha, 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 add four weeks to that or tell that to the Marines. <laughs> oh, boy, go and get what you can. Oh, it means that they are even say they are afraid that things are going to get worse, so they are trying to lie against us. So as a result, even their statement, when they say stop, is when Nigerians start to run. Because they say, <laughs> before they tell you to stop, there's something they want to get before you reach there. So run, let's see what it is. And it is a sad commentary. The day that we start to believe our government, we will be the people that are protecting the system, will be the people that are guiding the system, but our governments believe that we as citizens have really no role to play. Just sit down, let them do their thing. We have taken care of you for four years, so just keep quiet and let us be. To the, to the government, we are irritants. We, we are just disturbing them. They can't understand what this is all about. So that is why we are having these pressures and cues. And like you rightly acknowledged, before they say 1 billion liters they come, the other day they'll say 300 million liters that are coming. 
Why can't you just tell us Nigerians, we know that this is a hard truth to tell. This is going to last for about two weeks. We will advise, we will appeal that you go strictly on essential duties because we are having 300 million liters coming on Monday, another 200 coming. So because of this, it's going to go like that. And for the next two weeks, then it will taper out. And then on Monday, the 300 million liters arrive. They see it. On Wednesday, the other 200 arrive. And people say, oh, it makes sense. No problem. They will cool down. This panic buying and storing. And God help us. We haven't started hearing accidents that are coming on account of fuel being stored in the house. I believe that people would be able to cool down if, not, if our, our, our leaders can just manage to be just a little honest and sincere with us. Okay, That's all right. That's the problem. Mr. Yetuk, it's like uh, you saying that um, if the, the uh, government says, um, good morning, you have to check your time. In fact, <laughs> just start getting ready to go and sleep. Because it's <laughs> you know, around night. You know, in, in some other climes, with such a, a, an emergency, you'll be having daily briefings. Government officials yes. will, be, will be setting up uh, a press center to give daily briefings to the press. This is what we have so far. And you see a map, a chat. You know, they, they don't feel accountable to the people. And they have this high sense of entitlement, especially in the oil and gas industry. You have wrapped it up so well. I don't even think I should add any other thing other than to replicate what you have said. They don't feel any responsibility to the people. And they have this, this satanic high sense of entitlement you couldn't have put it better and it, and it is it is a complete reverse of what government and governance is all about complete reverse and nigerians why can't we wake up you see some days back the the, the national movement was better before then you have the national consultative front coming together these they are women and men that are trying to come out of their comfort zones to say enough is enough. We need a critical mass. We need every Nigerian to wake up. I want to thank Plus TV Africa because I know that in each of these um, situations, you follow them up and you actually give more than enough of your time. So I want to thank people for it. But I want to say, please, like Oliver Twist, do more. Let's have a lot more. Look, let the analysis, let the editorial team Think it, you know, you know, the, the media is the fourth estate of the realm. That is an actual constitutional responsibility, which means you don't have to just report, you can actually set the agenda. Let us stop. Oh, uh, Tinubu didn't eat breakfast this morning, he's looking this way. Oh, president is uh, traveling to go and do all those things are distractions. The question is, as we approach 2023. What are those things that we must change as Nigerians? Let's focus on the office of the citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. What are the things, what are the leadership recruitment criteria? You can't be telling me, oh, because South East, there is insecurity as a result. They cannot produce, produce. I mean, if you're a South Eastern, how will you feel? And meanwhile, you've given your life to one Nigeria. You are believing we can prove the narrative. And somebody is telling you, oh, because IPOP is making sense, it mean, or doing nonsense, it means that a presidency cannot come to the Igbos. You, at the same time, I have to tell the Igbos, maybe I should join them and form the strategic think tank with them. Today, you need to give a man like King's Limohalu capacity. People love him. They appreciate it. They just say, oh, he doesn't have money. Meanwhile, one man in Newe can fund that guy's campaign, can give him that capacity, can give him that boost, that move. One man, one man in Newe. Why can't the leadership of the Igbos and say, okay. we have to start? Uh, yeah, it's okay. We have to go. Um, we can give you a page of people from Newe. Maybe we'll narrow down to one. <laughs> and they are your in-laws, so we understand <laughs> where you're coming from. But, but that, you've said it all. You've said it all. And a fantastic, brilliant analysis as always. Thank you so much. It's for 8 o'clock. Thanks for having me. Thanks. I, I'm always delighted to be with you. All right. So we Not look delighted. forward to having you share your thoughts. And uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you all.
Well, that's the size of it. It's been very insightful. A delight, you know, uh, listening to uh, Zikan Yai to share his thoughts on some of his national issues. We take a break now. When we return, we're looking at our first major conversation. And just before then, let's tell you what happened today in history.